soll. Hello, I'm State Senator Michael Rodericks, and welcome back to another edition of Voices from the Hill. And as always, I'm joined by my colleagues, State Representative Carol Fiola, State Hello, Representative Senator. Alan Sylvia, and State here. Rep Paul Schmidt is stuck in Paris, the poor guy, but is, <laughs> he was on uh, a post-election, pre-new session vacation with his family, and what a place to get stuck no, in Paris. Not, that's not bad. Yeah, we were, not bad. We were stuck this morning down at the Chamber of Commerce at <laughs> 8 o'clock meeting. <laughs> we were stuck early at the Chamber, and, and uh, Rep Schmidt is stuck in Paris, but, um, you know, so we're, uh, we told him we'd have his back and we'd cover him, because Paul's a great, uh, a great partner yes. for all of us, and this is December now. Uh, we, uh, you know, the holidays yeah. are upon us. We have the elections behind us. Uh, we all want to say thank you very, very much for, for your vote, for your faith, for the confidence that you bestowed upon myself personally and all of us for re-electing us uh, for, this, for this next session that we can talk a little bit about um, because we're busy at work now preparing legislation that we'll be filing uh, for next session and maybe folks want to talk about a little bit some ideas that you might have as we uh, sure. as we're ready to hit into the next session uh, you know, I'd just like to um, echo what you said senator about a thank you obviously you know that I was uh, up for re-election and did have opposition and uh, I can't thank you enough for the confidence that you placed in me and you're right senator we're going to start up again and I, before we talk about some of the things I know that um, you've initiated the two of you and of course I join you in supporting it um, the legislation that we put forth the ideas come from you and I can't say that enough, that if you have ideas or concerns, um, that's how it starts. It's a problem or an issue or something that you've pointed out, and then we go to work and do the research to see what existing legislation <coughs> might be in place, might need to be tweaked, or might need to be added. And uh, I, I particularly have one, a, 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 um, a constituent of mine brought forward that, again, it starts out <coughs> with research. It starts out with research on what is in place, and, and that had to do with some mailings um, that my constituent received uh, regarding trips, as you know, uh, truth in advertising kind of stuff, deceptive advertising. And he got a piece on um, a trip, and uh, you can't even <laughs> read the fine print with a magnifying glass. That's how bad it is. And so it's very confusing for people when they see something that looks positive and looks like they might want to they might gain something from it and it isn't so we're looking at that now we found out there there are existing laws on the books there are some existing laws with the attorney general's office but we're delving a little deeper to see if we cannot fine-tune those and, and so and, we'll all be a part of that and there are so many issues like that and, uh, and representative Fiola brings up a good point and just to add in I'm very happy and pleased that we together as a delegation are back together again uh, looking forward to this next session because uh, we do work well together. We uh, are on top of things, and uh, we're meeting and talking every day about those issues. And this, what we just mentioned, was mentioned about filing legislation and bills. Uh, enough cannot be said about creative ideas, because these are things like Representative Fiola just said that happened to you. Uh, this is something that happened to you, and you go, my God, this is wrong. This shouldn't be this way. What can we do to change it? Well, you can, we can do it. You come to us, we sit down, we go to uh, the chairman, uh, go to uh, the council, uh, House, council. Uh, House Council, we sit with the attorneys, we say, look, we want to change it. Someone came to me with an idea regarding uh, the uh, issue of, uh, of hand sanitizers in, in restrooms, in, in our schools. Other states do this. We, we pass on so many germs and there are so many viruses that uh, other states have now required schools to have hand, hand sanitizers, not just in the restroom, but in the classroom. So this is something that I'm on a file. Uh, I think it's an interesting uh, piece, could be an interesting piece of legislation, which if we can keep costs down by keeping kids in school, which is one of the issues we all have in all of our schools, is, is uh, absenteeism, and also keeping, saving money with regard to health care, another big issue we're going to be dealing with in, in the House and in, in the Senate this year, uh, this is uh, all, what it's all about. So these ideas come from you. 
the, the issue of landlord, uh, mm -hmm. we had last night in Fall River, we had a <coughs> landlord training and, and uh, uh, we had the ch uh, Chief Justice of the Housing Court come in uh, to speak to landlords and to tenants because it's about both tenants and we're here to advocate for, for you, whether you're a tenant or a landlord. And uh, the bills that we're filing uh, uh, are going to be uh, hopefully reduce some of those regulations that cause some problems. Just because a law is there doesn't mean it's good. Or because a regulation is there doesn't mean it's good. Sometimes we have to change it. Very good. And of course, <clears throat> just um, we're just hearing about uh, something called 9C cuts um, that the governor uh, has the responsibility and the obligation to bring our budget into balance when he or she, in this case he, um, learns <clears throat> that there's a real likelihood that it's going to be out of balance. We were very concerned. Uh, the city of Fall River has some specific um, earmarks and some line items that are very important to, uh, to Fall River, especially on the public safety side. And it looks as though, and this is hot off the press, so we don't even have uh, any uh, finite information, but it looks as though the, the, the severity of the cuts aren't going to be that bad at this time, that we're going to dodge a pretty good bullet. Very important, especially when you're talking about um, talking about our local aid <coughs> and how dependent most communities are, but in particular, our gateway cities, and in particular, there's a you hear the word gateway cities, there's 26 cities that have been grouped together because they have like issues, like populations, like unemployment, different things like that. Well, in that gateway cities list, there are some that have even more challenges. And, you know, those are your Fall River, New Bedford, Lawrence, Springfield, Holyoke, different ones. So we have higher unemployment, lower educational attainment, and a number of issues, higher poverty. Um, so if we get hit with those 9C cuts, because frankly, we have a lower tax base of collected tax revenues to work off of. You know, and if you think about it, if we get that 20, almost $23 million of local aid that, that was unrestricted money that came to Fall River this past fiscal year, that's already been outlined to be spent. And we all know we're having challenges trying to meet even more than and, that. And now, of course, we were told that, uh, first we were told that that would be held sacred, that they wouldn't touch. That's why we uh, did it early. They wouldn't touch local aid. That they wouldn't touch. There were certain things that they would not touch. As a matter of fact, the well, governor he cannot. cannot he cannot touch cut. Uh, but then we find out that twenty-five million dollars of that, uh, three hundred and twenty-five million, is uh, going to be uh, focused on cutting local aid. Now that would bring us back to the two thousand and fourteen levels, which something that none of us in, in agreement with. But don't forget, as you know, and letting our viewers know, uh, Representative Sylvia. We are the ones that would have to vote on that. Yes. And you're already hearing from us that that's <clears throat> unacceptable. We've heard from our Speaker of the House it's unacceptable. So we've got some work to do uh, soon and to, to figure out where those cuts can come from. And I, I just want to go back to one other thing that we talk about how much money we get from the state. If you think about it, we collect approximately just under, I believe, $87 million in taxes for the city of Fall River. $87 million, that's the pile of money that we have collected to spend on all of our public safety, teaching, um, you know, uh, government work, all of those things. That comes in from the taxpayer. That comes, that comes in from the taxpayer. From but let's, let's think about this. Our budget for the city of Fall River is about 250, a little under $250 million. So you get a budget of $250 million of expenses. We collect revenues of 80, a little under $87 million. You know where the rest of that money comes from? The state. And that's the money that we've brought in. And so, and we're, now we're trying to protect even that $22 and, million. And, dollars. and we have to fight for it. And we do. Uh, and it's a battle, and it goes on in the Senate, it goes on in the House. And uh, we were so happy this past legislative year because we were able to get an increase. And we, uh, whenever we can get an increase, that's a win for us because we know that that's coming back uh, to our community. But then when we hear about a cut, uh, in local possible cut in local aid, none of us are going to vote for that. But, but, and as Representative Fiola mentioned, uh, sure there will have to be a cut somewhere else. But all of these cuts that are going to be somewhere else are someone else's priority. 
I, I mentioned this this morning. We had, uh, we received, I had uh, applied for a grant uh, through, uh, through the state for $100,000 for domestic violence for older women, to deal with the older woman in domestic violence. It's an issue that many people forget. Most people think domestic violence is for younger women. Well, there's an older population, especially in Fall River, and again in many gateway cities, that are affected by domestic violence. So this money was going to be used to, for training, support, counseling. Now, I found out last night that half of that money was cut. I received a call from the Department of Elder Affairs that half of that money was going to be cut. So th that's less money going to, to uh, STAR that's going to be providing that service. So where it, someone called that an earmark. Yep. And I was very upset yesterday when I one of our Republican colleagues called it an earmark. Well, uh, it's an earmark if it's not for you or if it's not for your community. That's an earmark. But when it's something that's going to help your community, that's not an earmark. If it's for a red light uh, on your corner that you need because there have been traffic accidents there, that's not a wasteful spending act. That's important. So. What is an earmark for someone who lives in Western Massachusetts because Fall River is going to receive something is not an earmark for us. Well yeah, said. Yeah, You've been yeah. involved with this for so long now, Senator, so you have the wisdom and the experience to, to guide us through this process. Um, I, I always recommend just taking it one day at a time. Yeah. It'll all work out. Um, that local aid, uh, the governor cannot cut local aid. Uh, he does not have that in, within his power. And being such a small deficit, I mean, $25 million is $25 million, but in the realm of a $36, $37 billion budget, it's really a penance. It can be actually backfilled through dipping into the rainy day, mm -hmm. uh, the rainy day account, which is the state savings account. Do we want to d dip into the savings to pay for this at this time? I don't know. Um, we have a new governor-elect coming in, and I'm excited about Governor-elect Baker coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, there's whole new teams being put into place, so, you know, it's, it's, there are great things happening here in Fall River. You know, the waterfront's opening up, we have Amazon uh, coming into Fall River with a thousand jobs, uh, the, the biomanufacturing facility is, uh, you know, ready to really open. Right now it's being credentialed and, and certified, so there's a lot of great things happening in Fall River right now. And, and you know, Senator, um, that's the stuff we, we need to talk more about. I mean, you just hit it on the head, Amazon, a thousand jobs. Well, uh, there's a lot of work that's been done by a lot of people over the last two years to get to this point that it's now public uh, that because it had to go before, as we know, the city council and the TIF board. It had to go then over to Freetown because the property, as most of you are aware now, straddles Fall River. 60% of the building and property will be in Fall River. 40% will be in Freetown. So. We've been working actually with the Freetown officials for the last year in setting the stage in good relations, setting up a working relationship. I know uh, Ken's office as well uh, has been involved with yep. that because you have to set up intermunicipal agreements and the devil is always in the details and that's what's been going on behind the scenes to get to this point. The next step for the Amazon deal, the thousand jobs of a Fortune top 34 country company in the country ranked number two as best places to work by, by um, national uh, uh, polling um, is to now go to the state because the state has also been working for the last two years to put incentives together to ensure that and Amazon will want. And so we'll be advocating and, and rallying for that mid-December. But, you know, some of you say, why incentives for a company like Amazon? You know why? Because Wisconsin's getting one too. Who else is going to get one? We want this type of business. We would need this business. Uh, I'll give you one quick example. The UPS um, drivers were at the Freetown meeting the other night when they voted on this, the town meeting. They were ecstatic. Now these are not jobs that are considered in those thousand Amazon jobs, but every day the UPS drivers and FedEx and others will be pulling up and delivering packages. Right. That's going to mean an explosion for the type of jobs that are going to be needed. It's going so to have such a domino. It's just not the direct jobs right. from Amazon. It's all the ancillary jobs 
that that overflow into other support yeah, yeah. organizations. There are so many spin-off possibilities. Oh, absolutely. To other employment opportunities. It, I get upset sometimes, and uh, I was with the senator this morning when we were talking, and I, I, I was upset because someone started, well, the biopark, that should just be for biopark. And, uh, we should, that, that just be, how ridiculous. Here we are, we, people have been screaming for jobs for so long. Here we have an opportunity to possibly get so many people in our community a job, and people complain about that. <laughs> It makes me well, crazy. People, people makes complain. Me crazy. People complain about it in every, in everything, and no yeah. one has, you know, worked harder on that piece of property than me. I mean, sure. you know, fighting against the proposed casino. Think, yeah. think of, you know, how much better this is than a casino, where a casino generates its revenue from sucking out of the local economy. This generates its revenue from outside. Yeah. Money's coming in. Do we have a, do we have we, a thousand bioengineers in Fall no, River? Exactly. And, and this all does not by other preclude people, people. the construction of the Amazon facility. Does not preclude anything in the future. That's the it. MAB, the biomanufacturing True. facility, is ready to hit the ro road running. That will generate, as the ATMC generated the private investment at Meditech um, next door. Um, so it's Across coming. The One thing at a time. For, uh, that the, they put aside. There's instead. all kind of land up there. That's land right. in Freetown That's at, right. at, at uh, the riverfront <coughs> park. So we met some of those folks at the MAB uh, that's doing some incredible things with vaccines. We sat down with them and and looked at how they how they produce that those pharmaceuticals and how how involved it is with the FDA yep. and and uh, I, I was amazed by the process. What an educational. Uh, what an education to sit with those those physicians that we sat with and those research scientists to look at and you, we could yeah. see how this is going to unfold for us in this community. It's exciting and and people underestimate what is really going on by University of Massachusetts, by what we've done and what you've done, Senator, uh, and our leadership has done to make sure that this has all happened here. And we, we're really truly are moving in the right direction with, with uh, what's happening yep. here. Well, yep. You know, the thing is, you mentioned those technology jobs, and, and I think the name of the park being called a bio park, you know, makes you right. exclusively think <clears throat> of those kind of jobs. But you hit on it, Representative and Senator. In the meantime, while those type of niche jobs, very specialized jobs, are, are being developed here, and our skills and education are being upgraded, we need to backfill the people who don't have those skills and that education needed for those type of jobs, we need to backfill them now. Think of this as the, the new Quaker, the new technology, mm -hmm. uh, the new more advanced uh, type of uh, jobs for that. Doesn't require yep. a college <clears throat> education, and while it's unfortunate that we have a high population that does not have a college education, Aren't we fortunate now to have a company of the stature of Amazon sure. interested in coming in and giving good paying jobs with good benefits and truly you need to be 18 years old, you need to, to be able to stand on your feet, you need to be able to read and write, you know, read English. Pass a quarry. Pass a quarry and, and, and un, this is true and it's an unfortunate but true issue. You need to pass a drug test. So while now there's no the small civil penalties for marijuana smoking, you can choose to do that. But if you go and get drug test and you don't pass a drug you don't test, work. you don't work. So very simple criteria. Will fall riverites have preference? Of course. You're going to have such an opportunity to apply. All of that's going to get going. And we hope to have shovels in the ground early spring, <coughs> late winter, early spring. It's exciting. And let's get fingers it's, crossed. It is exciting. It is. So, uh, it's exciting. So that's an early Christmas gift, maybe, for the city of Fall yep. River and Freetown yep. as we're in December. Yep. And um, lots to, going on. It's hard to even think of that, huh? December, Christmas, <laughs> you know, right. Thanksgiving with, with turkeys, with, we're giving them away, we're, we're, we're working at soup kitchens, we're, we're getting yep. out food. We're, it's so hard to even, uh, you know, we know what it was. It was warm for so long, and right. we were lucky with weather, this, yeah. which is another good thing about Well, we've been lucky. See what happened in Buffalo? <laughs> I know. Six but, feet of uh, snow. It's, uh, but it's also a difficult time for lots of folks. Yes. And it's important uh, to realize that there are a lot of people out there who are suffering, who are without uh, employment, who are uh, 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 going through difficult times. So. Uh, please watch your neighbor. If the weather's inclement, please 
check on that senior citizen who lives next door. Very important to take care of folks. Uh, this is not only a time of giving, but it's a time of caring. And uh, we together want to be sure that you all uh, focus on uh, the needs of not just ourselves, but on the people who live in and around us. Uh, uh, it's so important. You know, the, you know, one of the things um, we wanted to mention to some of you who are watching, uh, and you should already know about this if you are, uh, if it's applicable to you, and that is the changes with the new health connector. And why I bring that up is because um, some of you will be calling our offices, and, and uh, effective November 15th, that became the open date to start enrolling. If you were on a health plan <coughs> that, um, that you were, it was like a temporary health plan based on, as we know, all the, um, the, the health connector and the, and the Obamacare and all that transition we've been hearing about. But if you were on a plan and you receive a mailer, a phone call, a knock on your door that says you need to just go online or call this number to reapply for your health care plan, which I, we're all understanding it's going very smoothly, please do so. Please do so. If you get, they're going to make sure, the state is making sure that no one will not be covered. But you got to do what it says when you get that mailing. And that's about as simple as I can say. We're going right. to be doing some kind <clears throat> of event early in the year. We're going to be co-hosting with the state plan uh, sort of a workshop. I think it's tentative scheduled for January 12th at Bristol Community College right, right here. here where we are in the studio at Bristol Community College that we're going to bring in uh, the folks from the Health Connected to sit down with you to ask mm -hmm. answer your questions directly to help guide you through the process but you don't have to wait till then. Right. Uh, there's folks at uh, Health First um, mm -hmm. There's folks at, um, at STOP, there's folks at St. Anne's and Charlton, the hospitals, that can help you <coughs> guide you through this process. It's not that difficult, but it's something that you have to do. Right. No one can do it for you. And Somebody can do it with you, but nobody can do it for you. It has to be, you have to be part of the uh, application or reapplication right. process. And if you get, if you receive something in the mail and if you're confused, call one of our offices. Right. And we will definitely uh, lead you in the right direction to health first or someone who can, who can help you fill out uh, that. We've sat in the trainings. Um, I get confused sometimes, which my well, colleagues well, know that okay. we I, <laughs> I get confused when I, because it is overwhelming. <coughs> it's overwhelming to some of us with, uh, when we start looking at filing all of these documents that we never had to file before. Massachusetts had a great health care system and it was tampered with. I'm still not crazy about uh, the Health Connector. I'm not happy about it. And I think there's going to be some changes. Uh, the new governor is, is already committed to uh, looking at that closely because health care in Massachusetts, it's a, almost half of the cost of our budget. And uh, uh, one good thing about this new governor is he comes from both the background of health, uh, he was an administrator of uh, what, what? Harvard Pilgrim. Harvard Pilgrim and He's, he's a whiz with budget, so I'm hoping um, yeah. I'm hoping that with those skills yeah. uh, we benefit from that in this Commonwealth, and I'm I'm excited about uh, his uh, his taking over over the helm, um, and uh, but there are lots of changes that are taking place, and we're all affected by that because we try to get things done not only for our constituents but uh, to get things done in Boston to move things in the right direction. We're, we're still concerned about what's going on on the waterfront and Route 79 and, and the state piers we were talking about this morning. We have a me meeting right after this to talk about some of those issues. Yeah. So it never stops and we want you to know that uh, we're, we're uh, relentless in, in those concerns and those issues, yeah. it's important. Yes, very good, Representative. There's a lot going on. Uh, Maybe you want to talk briefly about some of the legislation. I know, Representative Sylvia, you're going to be filing legislation relative to oh, yeah. copay assistance for yeah. retirees yes. and any, you know, and what we have, what we have coming forward, what we're working on. But we have, um, we, we were approached by some of the retirees, and again, that's a, a situation where y people come to us with ideas, and we've learned that, uh, you know, the municipal retirees in Fall River were paying increased uh, rates for their copay. 
So uh, this was not something that they had had agreed for, had bargained for in contracts. So you know, 30, 50 years ago, when people took on positions, uh, either working for the fire department or as a school teacher, or even working for as a as a custodian, they were told, you know, ever have to worry, you're going to have a, a municipal job, and you're all set. You're going to someday retire, and you're going to get a check every month in the mail, and your health care will be paid for. You don't have to worry again. Well, these people retired. Now, some of them are 80 and 90 years old. We're living to be old. I can't believe it. <laughs> we, we, people are living to be 90, 100 years old. So now, when they retired 30 years ago, 25 years ago, they're getting $800 a month. Now their co-pays, which they never bargained for in a contract, now their co-pays are $200 a month. How do they maintain paying their rent, their utilities, and a $200 copay? That's absurd. And the, and the community, the Blue Cross Blue Shield, obviously uh, was right. deceptive to, to the city of Fall yes. River in some way because that was not So now we have there. a situation where the cities, through the, this GIC program... Which this, we all have and we, right, we enjoy. Yeah, did not to take that. But the cities, because they've gone with, with uh, Blue Cross and uh, decided to do that, are saving several million dollars. Fall River, up to about $8 million. We're looking for a mechanism. It may not be the municipality. We're working... Senator Rodericks and I are working with... Uh, have met with the uh, um, retirees a union uh, to look at what other states are doing uh, and how we can get some relief for some of these retirees. And uh, as soon as we get that, uh, some, of the, some of those details mm -hmm. finished, we already have most of the legislation written. The House Council has, has uh, put that together. And then we're going to file it. And uh, we'll be looking for support from across all our colleagues. And I know Representative Fiola and Representative Schmidt have already agreed to co-sponsor. And uh, we hope that we can get some relief. But th as soon as this came out and it was mentioned, other people came to us and said, hey, what about the rest of us? Why does it have to be someone who's over the age of 75? Or what about the rest of us who, who retired, who, who are going through the same issues? Because, and it's true. It's the yeah. truth. When we were in Washington, we talked to Senator Warren about some of the same issues. And these are some of the issues. There are people on Social Security who have to go at 75 and 80 years old looking for part-time jobs at Walmart because right. they can't pay their copay. It upsets me when I find out that people who come into my office are skipping their pills, their medication, because they can't afford it. So they're supposed to take uh, pills, these, these medications, every day, and they skip every day or every two days. This is the United States of America, 2014, almost 2015. We pump out billions and millions of dollars to every country in the world who hate us. And we can't take care of our retirees who worked all their lives. Those are the things that upset me. I know I get passionate about these issues, but those are the things that we... It's been what? fun today watching you, Representative. Yeah, you've been passionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you've been passionate to today. That's been great. Passionate and, we and, and we I love it. And we love it. And we love it. But there are other That's why we do what we do. That's, is because that's we are right. passionate. And now we're going to we're going to cut because we only have a few seconds yeah. left and we I'm sure everyone is going to want to wish everyone a yes. happy holiday season. So Representative uh, Fiola, ladies for us, yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. God bless you all. I hope you have a wonderful time with your family, with friends and reach out if you need some help. And blessed uh, Merry Christmas to all and, uh, and to all of my colleagues. It's such a pleasure. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas and most of all, a happy and healthy New Year yes. to everyone. God bless Thank you me. all. Thank you. Great. Very good. Yeah, that was all well done.